Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, we've got our character both modeled and UV mapped. We can see the UV maps here by going to the UV editing screen layout. And I'll just hit the tab key. And here is our UV map of the character. What I thought we'd do now is try and texture the little guy. And um, what I'd like to do is to use the new Blender 2.72 texture painting tools. So what we'll be doing is we'll actually be painting directly on the 3D model. But it's kind of a trick. It's kind of a, a visual sleight of hand in that it kind of looks like we're painting on the 3D model, but in the end, we're really painting on the UV map. And that's why we had to go through the arduous process of UV mapping the whole character here. So, having said that, let's take a look at what we need to do to set up the interface for texture painting. The first thing we should do is change from the cycles rendering engine to the blender internal. I'm going to change that here. The next thing I want to do is change the way the viewport is displayed. And to do that, I'm going to hit the N key to bring up the properties panel here. And I'm going to go down to shading. And I'm going to change from multi texture to GLSL. The next thing we need is a light. So I'm going to go over here to the Create tab and create a Hemi light. And just bring that up. And bring it up in the scene and maybe even rotate it just a bit here like that. The next thing we need to do is change our display here from solid to uh, texture. And once we do that, we get, well, nothing. It's black, and that's fine, so don't panic. Another thing we need to do is create a new material for our character here. Um, and now that I'm in the Blender internal e engine, I'm just going to go over here to the materials panel. And I'm going to switch this from data to, well, I'm going to select my object first, and switch this from data to object. That will give me a whole new material slot, and I'll press New, and here's my new material. I'm going to add that also to the eyes. And I'll rename the material and just call it Character. Okay. So now that we've done all of those things, we've uh, changed to the Blender internal, we've added a light, we've turned on GLSL, we've created a new material, we've switched to texture shading. Now that we've done all that, let's go over to object mode and switch from object mode to texture paint mode. Now you see what happens here is our material turns black and we get the texture painting tools over here on, on the left. If we go over to slots, you can see that it's created a new texture slot right here. And it's just called it Material Diffuse Color. We can create new texture slots here with the Add Texture Paint slot. And when we do, we can create Diffuse Color, Intensity, Alpha, Specular, Normal. What we'll be doing in this series is we'll just be using Diffuse Color, Normal, and Specular. Specular. So for right now, let's give this a name. Let's call this, uh, let's just call this color. If you look over here next to the materials panel, there is a texture panel right here. Notice that a new texture slot or new texture layer has been created over here as well. This is actually the same thing. This and this is the same thing. So let's change that to color as well. So remember I said that when we're painting on the 3D model, it's just a trick and we're actually painting on the UV map? Well, if that's so, 
then the size of our UV map or the, or the size of the image we're painting onto is actually pretty important. And currently that, um, that canvas that we're painting basically through the UV map onto is currently set to 1024 by 1024 pixels big. And what I'd like to do is paint even bigger. I'm going to change this to 4096 by 4096. That will allow me to get greater resolution. And if in the end I ever want to take this into a game engine or I need smaller textures, I can always save out a smaller version of these texture maps um, out of GIMP or Photoshop or whatever. The last thing I think I want to do is create um, a new screen layout for this, kind of like I did for the UV editing. So I'm going to go up here to the screen layout area and click the plus, and we'll call this, oddly enough, texture painting. For my texture painting layout, let's uh, split this screen. I just want to Split this screen. I'll hit T to close that panel. And I'm going to change this to um, a UV image editor here. And having the screen layout set up in this way will allow me to paint on the 3D model, but still be able to see what's happening as the paint lays down on the UV map as well. So now that I've got the UV image editor here, I'm going to change to look at that base color map right here. And I'm going to scroll out a bit, and there's that base canvas, as it were, that we're going to be painting onto. Okay, so let's switch over to texture paint mode. And once we do that, we can see the UV map laid over our canvas here. Now when we're switched into texture paint mode, you can see I've got this big circle here, that's my brush. And I can change the size and strength of this brush. If I move this over here, you can see we've got the radius and the strength of the brush. So the radius, if I drag this down, you can see it reduces the size of the brush. An easier way to do this is just hit the F key and then move the mouse back and forth. So I can change the size of the brush there with the F key. You can also change the strength of the brush with the shortcut key Shift F and then you move the mouse in and out. So if I move the mouse in, I increase the strength and if I move the mouse out, I decrease the strength. Now you can see that if I paint directly on this vest here, that paint pops up immediately on the UV map. So you can see we're just, even though we're painting on what seems to be the 3D model, we're actually painting directly through the UV map. So keep that in mind because these, the paint canvases or the, uh, or the images that we're painting on is actually what needs to be saved. Um, the paint information isn't saved on, on the model per se, it's saved into an image, which means we need to save them individually. So if you look down here to this image menu, you can see that there's a little asterisk right here. And that means that this particular canvas, this particular image that we're painting on has not yet been saved to the hard drive. So I'm going to undo this real quick just to get that off of there. And then to save this, I'm going to go to Image, Save as Image. And I'm going to go, I've got a folder here, Texture Painting folder. And I'm going to put this in here. And I'm just going to leave the name as color.png and save image. Now you see that asterisk is, is gone. And this canvas here has now been saved out um, as a separate file. So the key to this is when you are texture painting, you've got to save twice. You've got to, for one, save the scene, and for two, save the image. So oftentimes what I will do is I will do Alt-S to save the image. If you hover over the UV image editor and press Alt-S, that will save the image. And then you can press Control or Command-S 
to save the whole scene itself. So you've got to save twice or else you lose your paint information. Okay, let's start laying some colors down on our uh, character here. Say I wanted to give this vest um, kind of a solid brown color. Say it's going to be a leather vest. Um, I could, of course, just come in here to the texture panel and find a nice brown color and then just begin painting right on, uh, on the vest. There are a couple of problems with that. One is that if I tried to, say, paint this whole vest in one big block of color and I went over the line onto the shirt, then I'd have to clean that up and that would be a mess. So I don't want to do that. A good way to block that or to make sure you're only painting on one piece of the model at, at a time is this little guy right down here. This face selection masking for painting tool. Uh, if you turn that on, you'll get a wireframe on your model here. You can hit the A key to toggle selections on and off. And you can also right-click individual faces here. So if I selected a couple of faces here and then painted, you could see that I can paint on those selected faces, but I can't paint off of those. So what you can do is just like in edit mode, you can hover over a piece of this and hit the L key and that will select just that one piece. Now when I'm painting on this and if I accidentally go over the edge, it won't go onto any other piece except the vest. So what I want to do is get a nice brown color, a nice brown leather color for this. And I've got some reference images that, that I found on the web just to sample colors. In my texture painting layout here, I'm going to open up a new window. I'm going to stay with the UV image editor, but um, I think I'm going to open a new image here. I'm going to go to open image, and I'm going to find I've got some reference images here. And for the leather texture, let's see, I kind of think... For the vest, um, let's go with this one here. I've got a scuffed leather texture. And when I bring this in, I have it here, but I've got it, uh, I've still got the UV wires over it, and I want to get rid of those because all I want this is just to sample colors from. So to get rid of the UV wires here, I'm just going to go to View and uncheck Draw Texture Paint UVs. So now I've got a nice leather texture here that I can use to sample colors for my vest. So I am going to um, change this from view here to paint mode. And once I do that, I can hover over any of these colors and then hit the S key. And when I do that, you can see it changes my color. So I'm going to find a nice brownish color here, something like that. And then I'm going to come over to my vest and increase the paint brush size, increase the strength, and then I can just paint right on my vest. And this is great and all, and you can see it begin to um, go on to the vest here, but this could take a while. <laughs> if you've got a fairly complex piece or object, this could take a while. There is a better way. So rather than going through and trying to get all the little pieces and edges on here, what we can do is use the fill brush. Now you've got several brushes here. If you click on the little brush icon, you've got the brush, clone, draw, smear, soften, etc. But there is also a fill brush. So to get the fill brush, what we need to do is actually add a new, a new brush in here. And if yours comes up with a fill brush in here, that's great, but mine does not for some reason. So what I'm gonna do is create a new brush right here, just to click the plus to add a new brush, and I'll call it fill. And now you can see I've got this new brush in here. 
Now to make this new brush a fill brush, I'm going to come down here to the brush menu, choose enable paint tools, and click on fill. And that will create a new fill brush for me. All right, so now that I have the fill brush selected, I can come over here to the strength, turn that on. I need to sample my color again. I'm gonna come over here and hover over my leather texture and push the S key, and that will sample a color for me. And now I'm just gonna come over here and click, and that will fill the whole object. That's nice. Okay, in the next video, we will work on using the fill brush to block out the base colors for all the pieces of our model here. And then from there, we can begin adding more details to the texture. So, hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.